Well, that's a lot of people, Beck. You. <laughs> 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 All right. So episode 111. Mitch is back once again. And we did one yesterday, but Excuse is that guys, your music? Sorry, that's just uh, Facebook Oi. audio. This is there. yeah, playing spaghetti video. Yeah. Thanks for that, Facebook. <laughs> I love those videos. <laughs> yeah. Like five, like five minute crafts, and mm. it's ridiculous. Yeah, and just learn so much sometimes. Or, yeah, or they're <laughs> just like tie up your shoe with a piece of string, and they're, like no one would ever do it. Mm. But I'm obsessed. I watch it. <laughs> so we welcome you back on. <laughs> Thank you for yeah. having me. How long has it been? It's been a year, two years. Yeah, yeah, at least a year and a half, I reckon. Yeah, it's time. been a while. We didn't check back at what episode you did last time, but now you're on episode 111, so it's and gonna on be a good season 60 two episodes or so. Yeah, and so you get to sign on the new board, like. <laughs> <gasps> Cute. If you look behind you, your signature is still on the old board down yeah, there. Yeah, it's still big. Aww. It's still right there. <laughs> In the bowl. <laughs> <laughs> Just like as bold as <laughs> yeah, possible. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> to stand out. Yeah. That's yeah, funny. we were telling Zach on the podcast like that last night. Like we're getting Bex on next episode tomorrow. Just look in the corner and like <laughs> yeah. see her. Wait, logo. where? <laughs> down there. <laughs> right there. <laughs> so big. Yeah, I'll do a, do a so quick one. So what's been happening since we last saw you? Because it, since it's been a while, like you've done yeah. quite a bit, right? So I think the last time I was talking to you guys, I hadn't started Project Bex. Yeah, yet. it was like just in the works. Yeah. And like, I'm pretty sure you showed us the video clip for Thick, I'm pretty sure, I think. 
Or no, was... that probably wouldn't have been out yet. No, no way. No, okay. no, yeah. No, no, okay. I don't know if I even had anything released. I really? know we were talking about your releases. Yeah, yeah. so like, that um... would have been for thick when we were talking about it. Because I remember you did show us a few songs. I'm pretty sure. Mm. But well, the... I released an EP in like December 2020. Mm. Yeah. So that was my first like. What was the reception like for your first EP, Lol? Yeah. How did it go? Good, uh, Good. I think. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was just like that interesting thing as a producer, like I just wanted to get stuff out there. But then you're, when you're still kind of finding your sound, it changes so quickly. So I love that EP. Mm. Um, Would you consider it like very experimental then? Just like uh, even now, like I don't really know what direction I'm going in. So I guess that's the whole thing of like just release more and then people can kind of – the more you release, then the more people understand your yeah. sound, even though the songs will be so different. Well, it's a good way to do it though as well because mm. then also you kind of hone in on the direction that you want to go in. But at the yeah. end, you, like you can look back on it and go, you know, and that's where I started kind <laughs> of thing. I love like doing that artist that you really love, go back to their like first ever – releases and be like whoa like that's, yeah. where, that's where they started and so different to where they are now. yeah and, you're just yeah. like what were you making but it's like <laughs> sick if you what like artists them. are you thinking about when you're thinking about that kind of stuff i just recently went on like doja cats like deep dive and obviously it's all still hip-hop but like mm. so different like she's like huh it's more yeah yeah <laughs> What does that mean? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> is that like a uh, hitting that genre? Cat? You saying she's like mellowed out in her uh, in her? Uh, I no, I know. think she's like she's gotten way more like bad boss. Yeah, she used to like kind of just sing and be like more cute, and her produ- like production has changed so much and everything. But mm. yeah, it's cool. It's cool to watch. So you released that EP. Then how much stuff have you released since then? Like released the EP and then released thick last year yeah so and then i was doing a lot of i did a lot of remixes um for other people and like collabs which i I forgot about until just then so like (laughs) i feel like i was like oh i actually haven't released anything in a while but i did a whole lot of collabs with people but not like a project bex like solo track yeah but that was really fun like just working with other people and then like you learn so much from them because like how did you get into producing and like how long have you been producing for in total because end like, of like mid 2018 yeah 19 20 21 yeah like so three this is an interesting point now we had you at the start of your producing career yeah mm. and now we're here yeah yeah so uh what have you learned since <laughs> oh. i know there's a lot but like if you could pick three things that you've learned along the way that have made your life easier as a producer um, I would say make, always just make stuff for no reason. Mm-hmm. Um, cause that's when I made like the best songs I've made, I think have just been with me not thinking about like the audience or thinking about releasing it. I was like, I want to write a song about being a corporate bitch mm-hmm. and wrote it in like half an hour. And that's like the best track ever. <laughs> um, it's funny how some of those tracks work. Yeah. Yeah. I remember it's the same with Valentino Khan's Deep Down Low. Really? Just picking up what we were talking about yesterday. Mm. I was saying that I... Because that song was so popular that it had like a billion different remixes. Oh, yeah. 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 So I put them all together and sent it off to Valentino Khan. Just like each remix, like the different drops. And it was like 22 minutes long, the mix. And it was just Deep Down Low on repeat. Oh, my God. That's sick. Yeah. Yeah. And it was Smart. like eight minutes long or something, wasn't it? Also, side note, anybody who gets like antsy about like dropping an original track and then a remix straight after it of the same track, I'm I'm totally on board with that. I think yeah. that's a cool thing to do. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't like drop the first drop of the original and then like play it out the whole track and then, you know, bring in another remix. I would use the first drop of the original and then to spice it up, I would bring in the remix drop, you know? Mm. And that's how you spice up the set. What about mixing in Hung Up by Madonna with Gimme Gimme by ABBA? <laughs> Yeah. Been, been, that yeah. has been gimme, gimme, so gimme. thrashed, yeah. and I love it. Yeah. I will do it. <laughs> I mean, I'm a culprit of that as well. Like, yeah, it just people works. like, whoa, <laughs> yeah, that's it. Two yeah. songs, same. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> funny. Yeah. yeah, I can't think that would be one like just always make stuff not for anyone but yourself. Like make stuff because it makes you happy. Because when you start like putting agendas to music, it can get that's where you like hit walls. I think yeah, get muddled and stuff. Yeah. Um, keep and just keep like learning stuff. I think 
Because a lot of my tracks now I've I made like say like a year ago, mm. just like left them. But now I've gone back and I've like yeah, kind of remixed them with my skills now. Mm. So like nothing is ever wasted. Like never always save everything you're doing and then like. That's a pretty good way to do it because I've mm. heard so many producers that just put it like folders upon folders upon folders. Yeah. And just forget about all these little projects. That they're yeah. Just, yeah. I always go back to stuff and will even just like use like five seconds of it. But like because every day I'm getting better in mm. theory, hopefully. How many hours a week do you try and produce or like spend time in the, in the studio? It wasn't f- for a while, like not very – I was – took a huge like step back from it because I got a new job and like yeah um so just didn't have any time which sucked life got in the way yeah Mm. Mm. (laughs) but now like at least yeah I try and do like a couple hours a day it's kind of like I'll just like be like have Netflix on it's like my wind down time then so you just like laptop on the couch kind of thing yeah yeah nice yeah so you do you have like a home studio yeah yeah how often does it get that get used compared to the couch? <laughs> not <laughs> not <laughs> yeah. a whole lot. Not often. <laughs> yeah. I have like all my stuff in there mm. and like sometimes I'll sit there, but it is that kind of, again, I'm, I guess I'm, cause I'm took such a break from it and now kind of back into it. I'm learning like my habits and what works for me, mm. but I have like used the studio and a lot of time when I'm recording like vocals or recording like an instrument, I'll be in there because that's like where my mixer and everything is. Yeah. Yeah. But if I'm just like, I'll just like bail on the couch. Hang around with the keyboard, yeah. <laughs> but also not in your bed. I like, a lot of people obviously would just like lie not in bed in and bed. do it. Mm. But I like, I'm like, separate it. Yep. Don't, I'm just like, don't work in your bed because that's where you sleep. But. That's it, yeah. So like these are the yep. tips that people are picking up like when they have to like work from home because of COVID. Like mm. how, do, how do I separate work from yeah. home when, when they're like, working from home? Shower, mm. maybe. Get out of your pajamas. Yeah. Before, <laughs> and you're like, oh, true, I guess. Yeah. I guess so. Mm. Funny though. I don't oh, know. well, the silver lining of producing music at home is that you don't have to get out of your pajamas if you don't want to. Yeah. Yeah, buddy. It's good. It's yeah. very good. Mm. I never will. <laughs> so does the does the band practice at your place, or do you have like a <sighs> like for Project Bex? I know you've got. Like I a whole... wish. And how many people are in the band and everything as well? So like... there's constantly like rotating, which is super fun. There's the core members, which is me, my synth player, and my drummer. Yep. Um, and they're amazing. What are their names? We'll shout them out. Amaya. Amaya. And her like side project is Nia Palaxi. She's so cool. Nice. That's a pretty cool name. Yeah. And then Ethan. Um, and he's like the best drummer in Perth. He's like incredible. Hands down. <laughs> and then the singers, yeah. I just like I like to have. I just like if anyone wants to join, I just like give them the everything. I'm like cool, learn it if you want, and then like have little like guest appearances or whatever. Like if they just want to do a couple shows, because I just want to have that as like a more of a community and do they have, have to, like look. a choir. But I have two main girls okay. at the moment who are like sick. Which are they is, in the music video? Or uh, thick, one of them is. One of them is. And do they have so. to audition at all as well? Because no. like, no, nah. they're just like, okay, learn the lyrics, go for it. Yeah. <laughs> nice. But I'll kind of just have to be like, can you hold a harmony? Mm. Yeah. Instead yeah. of just going, yeah, you got it. Someone's <laughs> like, I can sing. I'm like, yeah, send me a voice memo. <laughs> but not even that. Like, in the live stuff, a lot of the time, I'm not really singing. I'm like rapping and like jumping around. So like, people would argue, be like, well, you don't even. I don't know. Mm. But Emily and Heather are the singers. So the full band, Emily, Heather, Emma, Ethan. Shout out. Dream team. We love them so much. And how long have you guys, like, what was it like doing your first performance with them? And then, like, with that, how long does the performance go for? And, like, how long ago was your first performance? Because it would have been a while now, right? First Be- Project Bex band was September. So really not that long ago. Yeah. <sighs> 2020. Oh, 2020. Okay. Nice. I think. I, I, take, I take it back. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, yeah. September 2020. So we've been around for a year, um, which is still like kind of crazy. That. But it seems so, like you've come a long way. Yeah. Kind of thing. It was, everything happened really fast, which is cool. Um, but yeah, it's just the, the set change. We like kind of rehearse when we have like a, gig in mind mm. but a lot of bands like rehearse weekly like non-stop yeah. and i'm just like can't be bothered <laughs> <laughs> so we'll like rehearse 
and if there's like someone new joining the band, they have to learn like all the dance moves and all the like little changes and like sets and stuff. But um, so there's dance moves as well involved. So many, really choreography, baby. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. Have you partnered up with anyone for the like dance choreography, or was this all out of the mind of Beck? <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Yeah, I've I had some choreographers come in, just like my mates who are dancers. For some of them, or it's been like me, or it's like we kind of riff off each other. Yeah, so mm. like we had some chore- choreographers come in the first couple times, mm. and then we you just kind of like. And now we like know each other's bodies. <laughs> That's like, so someone will suggest a move and I'm just like, nah, my knees, like I can't do that or something. So we mm. kind of know like what, what you can and can't do. Yeah. While you're talking about this, I might pop up the video for it. Thick. This took this literally. So the other two dancers are like profesh dancers and they're amazing. So they learned this in like two weeks. It took me like two weeks. five weeks to learn. I'm the worst dancer. <laughs> Like, oh, God. It was great, though, but cannot dance at Yeah, all. the camera work hides it all, don't worry. Yeah, the, I'm like, transitions made me look good, but <laughs> it was so much work. So, um, so well, for this video in particular, who, how did you, did someone approach you for this music video, or have you paid someone for this? Yeah, no, I knew I wanted a video for the song. And then I like had this idea of just like these three like colors and like fitness, eating, like, eh. Mm. <laughs> um, and then I reached out to this dude, Cooper Gordon of like Gordon Visuals. Mm. He's great. And he just, him and this girl, Ashley Hunter, was, like kind of directed it, videographed it. Mm. It was so easy. It was just like one day of filming. Um, but only one day of filming, do you say? Yeah. It was wow. like. Six hours. It's all done. That's it not looks bad. Like in studio against some backdrops. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty good though. Just for one day. Yeah. Like, just to, like there, there you go, kind of thing. Yeah, like, it was. Just it just all worked. <laughs> all bloody worked. It's a very polished production, I think. Yeah, that's what everyone says. Like our, which is why I think Cooper's so dope. And like, because I just obviously had a really strong vision, so it wasn't like this super expensive high thing. It was just like. Yeah, except all of that food, mm. I like bought it from Coles, and then like an hour later, this was like obviously yeah, whenever it was, Mark's like we have to go into lockdown. So then I was like no, so all this food like a lot of it we could keep, but we just just went off. And I yeah. was like because then we had to push the filming back a couple of weeks, but I was like, do I just eat it all? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Are no. you uh, <laughs> are you like big on food wastage? <laughs> nah, what a question <laughs> Not for music videos no. My <laughs> fridge is so sad Everyone who comes over there just like This is the saddest fridge ever Because I don't <laughs> buy I just like Buy stuff on the day Of what I'm going to make And I only ever buy like What I need so I'm the same yeah I love, My fridge is empty You a do lot it like a shop It's a good like way to do it day, though Save yeah. money like. well, It's just like a little of like Wine in there like, I'm so <laughs> single and alone I'm like Yeah Nice but, the food is good. This is like a funny thing though with this take, mm. like eating all the food. So we would eat it and then when he'd say cut, we all had like little spit buckets because <laughs> it was so much sugar. Yeah. And we did the take like, like quite a few times. So he'd be like cut and I'd be like, uh. <laughs> <laughs> just like icing and like chips and shit like into this cup. <laughs> oh, wow. So where it's was it? It's not as glamorous as it is yeah. in my look. Uh, yeah. Where was it filmed as well? What studio? Hazard, Hazard. Studios in the city. Nice. They're sick. It's like a white room, very yeah. chill. And so then with that, it's just like, with the background changing, like, was that just CGI or something? Nah, he, they have a... Uh, backdrops? Like, wallpaper, like, pull-downs okay. stuff. I, th- I think that's what it was, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Didn't you bad. do film production at TAFE? Yeah, and I did, yeah, a little bit. Did you go to the studio at all at the TAFE? Yeah, but it was just exactly white. Exactly like that, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Except you but can yeah, you can wheel in these, like, huge... Like, lights or something. Nah, like, they're just, like... Huge backdrops, yeah. basically, yeah. I don't... What is it even called? I don't know. <laughs> backdrops. Wall, wallpaper, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it is. Yeah, ba- yeah backdrops. Usually it's it. a answer. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so smart. Woo. That's the first time anyone's ever said ni- anything nice about me. Oh. <laughs> I'll say it all night. Smart. Look at you going behind oh, the thank computer. thank you, baby. Am I going red yet? Beep, boop, beep, boop, beep. <laughs> uh, I'm not red. 
So have you you've played it out and about as well? Like so you've actually like performed that song out and about multiple times, right? Yeah. So the there's the other videos the thick launch was yep. at the Recabite. Okay. Super dope. We had like 3D projection and like that was great. Um, but How yeah, that's been that song is a pivotal part of the set because very like this is Bex. Like, mm. Well, it's a banger, honestly. Yeah. It's just it's produced very well. Thank so. you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So but that was it, another song that just took me like probably like two days. Really? And other songs take me like weeks. I was just like, I'm a thick bitch. <laughs> Bam, done. done. <laughs> Simple nice. is better sometimes. I don't know. Mm. Is um is thick your most popular song? So a lot of the songs in the set now are all unreleased, but we have like a really cool f- following. Like people come to Beck shows all the time, so they know all the tracks. Yeah. And that one I said before, corporate, corporate bitch, is like the best song ever. Right. <laughs> not really, not out yet, but it will be out soon. But it'd be like that and thick. It's also the thing of like, yeah, what I was saying before, like knowing your. Z- the audience kind of thing or yeah or like my genre yeah 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 i think project Beck's sound is either like this kind of like boss like hip hoppy vibe or it's like these incredible harmonies and really like kind of spooky those that's like to me what project Beck's is so mm. a lot of people will either like love the rap stuff or they'll love the like spooky like stuff so there's something for everyone, you know? <laughs> I'm guessing it's also heavily inspired from your DJing as well. Yeah. Mm. So how was the separation like between your DJing persona and Project Bex? Because um, I know you also go under just Bex when you're DJing. Is that right? Yeah. I think, which also confuses people. Mm. And I was like, what do you mean? So simple. <laughs> but so moving forward, I think it's going to be like Project Bex DJ set. Yeah. But the... Yeah, I think the main, the bet, when I play a Beck set, I just like would play any genre, like as in a Beck's DJ set, any genre, anything, like I play everything, but it's only, I'll only play songs that I like, obviously. And most of the time they're in just in some sense, like fun. So even if it's like hardcore drum and bass or like, they're just like a bit more interesting and theatrical is like kind of my main word. Yeah. So like, whereas some people would love like, melodic stuff where they love like really good drums or but I mine's always just like weird theatrical fun. So I think that comes over into my original music of like whatever it might they might be different genres or whatever, but they're still like fun, bubbly, high energy theatrical. Yeah. yeah. Theatrical. Just like just the image that you're trying to paint kind of thing. Yeah. Just, yeah. But is it? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well it sounds like it. <laughs> well, are you have you been to uni? Have you done like any theory stuff regarding like music or nah. no. Nah. And I sometimes feel so like <laughs> people are just like, What key is this in? I was like, I don't know. <laughs> no, it's a good key, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like I learnt I learnt piano a bit of never like learnt voice but sung. Piano and sax in school. But that's so like like school yeah, learning. That's yeah. it. And I was like pretty good at piano. But then the second I left, I was like, what the heck is like <laughs> a minor key? And like, what? <laughs> so sometimes like when I've worked in collaborations with people, I mean, I guess that would be another tip for any musician, like never discount yourself because you don't have like classical training or whatever. Or you're not following. That's the- it. It's I've just, always seen art. Sorry, Alex, I'll let you speak in a bit. Yeah. I've always seen art as like the whole point about art is to break boundaries, to break, walls, yeah, not mm. to be stuck inside of them. But that's it. It's mm. the passion. It's mm. the it's the driving force to be able to go. I want to make music, so I'm just going to give it a go. Yeah, you don't have to go. Okay, well, I've done X amount of years doing this, or yeah, done that, sure. or all this other stuff. It's just going. Okay, I want to do it, so I'm going to do it. Yeah, so. and to just acknowledge that, like, if you're ever working with someone, you feel like you're. I don't know, not as good as them or whatever. Mm. Like you feel insecure. There's always something that you're better than someone else at, I think. So like I always get like complimented on my like, yeah, progressions and my like song structure, for example, which is nice. But then I'm like, I'm not very good at drum. Like I'm not a drummer. So I'm always like reset. I'm, that's what I'm feel well, like. Drumming's like one of the hardest things you can learn. Yeah. Because well, you've got to keep perfect time. One E and a two E and a like. That's it. The signature Triple yeah. whatever. Yeah. So, but then other people will be like amazing. Yeah. Amazing at like 
yeah, playing synth, but mm. not as good. So there's always like, just go in and make a cool track and don't like feel insecure because you, you've always got something to add. It's just the puzzle though. It's like, you just got to put the pieces together. Yeah. Like as you, as you said before, it's like your whole, like your project Bex in itself, you managed to find the right people to be able mm. to actually make it just so it works. Yeah. Because, yeah. like, you know, that, that's, what it, that's what a band it is. So happy. <laughs> yeah. Cause it makes so happy. Like, it's so true. I'm very mm. lucky to have that group, I think. How long did the sets actually go for? Like, do you do, like, a one-hour thing? Or is it, like, three hours, four hours on oh stage? Oh, my God, no. <laughs> like, yeah. We... <laughs> I can't imagine a three-hour set would be much fun when you're singing. Oh, yeah. It's <laughs> like 30 train. minutes to an hour is, like, a normal set. Yeah. Yep. We've got enough songs for probably, like, an hour and a half set. But it is so, like... Yeah, if you ever come to a show, we're, like, dripping yeah. by the end of it. Like, I purposely just go so hard. Mm. So, I couldn't... It's a good way to do it, though. Even, like, a 45 is, like, pushing it. Mm. Um, but it's, like, yeah, it's good. Just you should, like, um, make, like, a song called the Puffed Out song or something where you just, like... <laughs> the drip. Or into something. the mic yeah. at the end, like... <laughs> yeah. Well, I have to strategically, like, plan my set in terms of, like, if it's a really, like, belty, like, I have to sing a lot mm-hmm. to not play that after a really, like, turbo song because mm-hmm. then I'm, like, puffed out. So I have to, like, literally plan my set knowing, like, our choreography and knowing what level of tiredness I'll be. Yeah. <laughs> and same with the girls. Like, we do so much in different songs to put, like, a really, like, slow, like, belting song after, like, <laughs> that. It will sound so bad. Do you ever have to take breaks in between tracks or like after two, three songs and get a glass of water and just like, okay. Only when go you've again? got the time. Nah, the, yeah. the, another thing like that I'm passionate about is like this, the set as a whole, not just like there's a song here, pause, there's a song here. So like basically there's like sound throughout the entire set. So 45 minutes of like, I've like, like scored. Yeah, scored yeah. stuff underneath it and bring like, up the bell curve before. You, mm. you know the bell curve in movies, like you have the uh, on my camera. Hi, um, <laughs> you, it starts off like low energy, and then there's a peak, and then it comes back down. Yeah, and that's like the because as well, yeah, climax. Because you know, Be- like Project Bex is so like, boots whatever. Yep. <laughs> people, you need to like give people a rest. <laughs> like even with DJ sets and stuff, you have to like audience is not going to be like. For an hour, like, no one can do that. Yeah. Like, so, what do they call that? Is, again? <laughs> is it Pardon? rotating the floor? Rotating the floor. Yeah, like that DJ technique where you... you well, it depends, though. It's all, it's also, you know, don't go too hard too early kind of thing as well. Yeah, like, you got to coax... Like, you have to read the crowd. Coax make like, the audience feel, like, safe and that they can really yeah, express themselves. Mm. And then you go, like, high, but then you bring it back. Yeah, it's, like, mm. a really cool thing in any any musician, like DJs and That's it. bands. You get to, like curate this journey for your audience and like how you want them to respond also shout out to daniel mazzotti who's in the chat now and uh thanks for inflating my ego <laughs> dj mitch yep. <laughs> fiendish i will not lampoon you for forgetting my dj name <laughs> <laughs> so DJs, so right. do you have djs before you go live like what time do you usually play when you actually go out and do do your project decks um normally it's on a band lineup so yep. we'll have like we've had some sick supports like for the thick launch it was like giacomo ghost care myriad sun and then like two spicy djs okay that's like their name too spicy not mm. like <laughs> yeah two spicy djs yeah and then other ones we've had like grace sanders molly jose so like there's normally bands on before and then we play like headline 11 or whatever but there's also this like movement in perth at the moment where everyone's playing earlier which i love mm. so people because my like, parents rarely come to my stuff because they're like you play too late i was like it's 10 30 what are you doing <laughs> yeah, like, i know my mom is like people, yeah. having a wine at home like she's awake so i was like you just don't want to be out <laughs> but yeah i think the project bex thing as well is more like fusing that like club electronic dj thing with live performance so we yeah. it is a kind of a hard thing like if we do day day shows in the day shows in the day <laughs> sometimes i feel like it loses like bex project bex is made for like strobes like yeah, dark mazes. room like eh. so yeah yeah and i think that's fine 
to like know that and want that for your project so like i pick like really specific venues that can like do the production that i want and that mm. kind of thing um what, what type of venues like so you've done wretched bite the wretched bite yeah yeah we've also had to like um it's funny like picking the venue now because there's like five of us in the band mm. sometimes we actually just can't play certain venues because the stage is too yeah, small it's too tiny yeah. for us to be like that's it. Do all the like moves? Yeah, I can imagine like uh, the well, sewing room or, something or even like that Lucy's. Too. Like Lucy's stage is tiny. Yeah, we've we've played there before and we're playing there again actually coming up. But that's so. I mean, we still will play them, but it's mm. so it's like f- so fun and sweaty. But it is just like crammed. Whereas yeah. like we've played like Freo Social, like Freo Art Center, the. Free or social would have been good. Yeah, it's like a just even like Slim's, just like a nice, like bigger, longer stage. Mm. Um, but anywhere. Yeah, anywhere. Yeah. Anywhere and everywhere. <laughs> a house, garage. As an, as an event planner myself, I'm at that stage where it's like anywhere will do too. So mm. Yeah. Pull me Please on the respond. stage. Yeah. <laughs> Pull me on the bloody stage. <laughs> Pay my bills. Yeah. And so you've got a bit of a uniform thing going as well by the looks of it. So it's, it's yeah. all orange. Like what made yeah. what made you settle on orange? Like I don't know. People ask me that. Is orange your favorite color? I'm like, no. <laughs> I mean, I'm wearing it today. But yeah. I think for me it was like the color of I just wanted like pretty in your face stuff. Hmm. And everywhere, like, you know, whenever you're driving down the road and there's, like, tradies that, like, fluoro orange, you're like, <gasps> that's literally where it came from. I was like, I didn't want, like, this fluoro. And also this colour, If again, like, at our shows, we the production's plan, there's a lot of, like, UV lighting and we have, like, face paint and stuff and the orange, like, picks up so yeah. well with that. Yeah, it would, yeah. Um, but, yeah, that's the only reason it's just, like, looks sick i reckon do you ever play any tracks with the balaclava on at all yeah and just, it's it, hard yeah i can imagine like. just like also because it, then it will be like yeah this on my face and, and i'm trying to be like and cool and, like, and then well. my eyes are here and there's like wool in my eyes i'm like <sighs> but we do it for the show that's, <laughs> so that's, that's, that's why what matters. marla just like bops on stage and doesn't like do yeah. anything <laughs> that's yeah. It. yeah but i reckon if you were gonna wear it all the time you would have to like make a custom mm. which most i think of these bigger djs do like custom fit to like his eyes and his stuff so it's yeah like, and super thin breathable material yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, even like when i wear wigs like djing or whatever i'm just like dripping <laughs> I think I'm just a sweaty girl all the time. <laughs> nice. Like after the show, I'll be like, "Are you guys sweaty to like my band members?" They're like, "No." I'm like, "What am I doing?" <laughs> like it's really cold. Oh. Sometimes question that you're in the wrong industry when you're <laughs> dripping after a thirty minute. I know. Set. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna get more fit. Now nah, it's not even like puffed. It's just like I'm wet. Yeah. <laughs> Why? It's just a sign that you put in 100 percent effort. Yeah. Look. Mm, yeah. That's it. Yeah, Maybe absolutely. you should uh, start lampooning your uh, band members when they're not sweating. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll just start, like, doing, like, Project Vex sweatbands. Yeah. Like, Anyone else need them? No. Mm. <laughs> no. Just me? I'll wear five. Five on your arm? Yeah. Have you ever okay. thought about getting into merch at all or anything like that? Yeah, I had this really cool merch. I should have brought some for you. Um, oh. <laughs> I know, next time. <laughs> next time, definitely. For the thick launch, it was, like, these, like, um, stress balls, but they're in, like, butt. It's an ass. <laughs> <laughs> in like a thong and i like handmade these little beaded key rings that said like bex on the end of it super cute um and we have shirts and stuff i'm gonna do when i'm releasing my next song which will hopefully be in april we're doing like a full new run of merch and like we just kind of took a little bit of a hiatus obviously covid mm. me getting yeah like working so much and just kind of like took a little break and now we're back yeah. Back into it. Excited. Yeah. Although we're still having COVID issues at the moment. Well, that's it. Gigs are getting yeah. lost and everything. I feel sorry for like Origin and Rome and all these big festivals that have pumped in it's thousands, not, it's hundreds It's not so much them dollars. though. It's um bloody Breakfast. Yeah. Third year in a row. Mm. Breakfast can't But it's go also ahead. like, it is, it does suck, but they do, they get like government support. Yeah. It's all the artists. And the that DJs don't. that that's lose it, yeah. sets. So like, I haven't got paid for any of my cancel gigs because- I don't charge GST mm. and that's like the loophole. Mm. So all these like really big company, like event companies get paid, even though it's like they're still probably losing money. But yeah. it doesn't filter down to the artist, which kind of sucks. Yeah, I heard that the grants only go out for events that are of a value of 50000 or more. 
Yeah, yeah. it was like 50 so, or 75k and it's like, yeah. well, obviously I don't make that, but mm. that that's like my income and because yeah. I'm my job that I took on was like venue managing of a music venue, which was dope. But that along with like performing and DJing, that's that's like my income. So every time we close, obviously the bar closes and DJing. So it's like I just all my income stops. Yep. That's it. Hospitality. But I'm not earning more than whatever. Well, so you know about that too, don't you, Alex? Yeah, that's why I've swapped jobs. It's the mm. only reason why. Literally been a full-time DJ for the last five, six, no, seven years, six, seven years too now. Too long, Alex, too long. And that's it. And then it's just like it e- sucks. everything stops. New Year's gets cancelled and then I still go to work, but there's no one there and it's just like it's boring. Yeah, and yeah depressing. So it's like, okay, it's time to... Yeah, Dan went up to in the uh, Geisha a couple of weeks ago and there was like 11 people in the whole club the whole yeah. night. Have, no. <laughs> have you found as well that it just seems like hospitality is just dying We're a little bit? We're just getting absolutely cooked. Yeah. yeah. It's like unbelievable. It's not good. And yeah. Yeah. But it's just that whole thing which has been like, I'm sure that like said to death is like in lockdown and in like times of need, people turn to art. Like mm. they listen to music mm. and they're watching Netflix and they're like, you turn to art, but we're just not getting supported. Yeah, and it's not good. Fucked every single time. And it's like, I mean, that's do been you the listen thing to a song? The generation, so <laughs> yeah, <laughs> music and the arts always been like the. I mean, I'm getting. But it's like now, the but. longest art form in the world. There's like cave yeah. paintings from. That's like, it. Why do light? I don't know. Yeah. Talk about it. <laughs> we're As just gonna be resilient. Mm. Resilient. Yeah. Well, I mean, I feel like there'll be a big, like, re- like revival of the industry soon. Hopefully. That's I just, you- yeah, it's just like ripping the band-aid off. We all just need to, like, get COVID or get over it. I don't know. But <laughs> Controversial. It has been, yeah, no, just, please, try and not get it. Please, yeah. as a DJ and an artist, please yeah. get COVID. <laughs> but just, like, we do, we just have to live with it. Mm. And I think. That's it. It's not going anywhere. Yeah. So what can we do? Yeah. It's just it's so but to- I think just the main thing for like any artists and hospital workers and people who've lost lost like a sense of purpose, I guess. Yeah. Is like just- We're the ones that are getting hit the hardest. That's yeah. the thing. You know, people can just go, oh, okay, I'm not going out this weekend. You yeah. Know? But for us, it's like we live for this. Yeah, when people are like, My New Year's got cancelled, I can't get drunk. I was like yeah. that was like fifty percent of my income that night. <laughs> That's but, it, yeah. Like you can't you can get drunk at home, bro. Yeah. Yeah. But I think I would just say, and this is like the whole like fake it to make it because I need to believe it as well is to just like <laughs> keep just doing it because it makes you happy and like yeah just try and keep going I that's need, it like, uh-huh. I need to rem- like remind myself that and everyone else who's an artist like just keep going because you love it and we're all great well that's like what I said before we went live it's like when we're watching one of the videos it's like you know when you see yourself up on that video in front of all those people you're like mm. there's a reason why I do this and it's, yeah. it's not money it's yeah. because like I'm having so much fun expressing myself, like playing music and you know generating feelings and emotions mm. and the whole lot. And they're having fun. Yeah, it's, it's why and then we you do just it. Don't get to do it, and you're like, yeah. I think I, what I would like to see most for the music industry is a, a little less inequality in terms of like pay. Mm. Oh, like, for sure. It just generally, not necessarily in Perth because Perth's pretty small, but. Um, in terms of the worldwide industry, you've got the one percent who are making, you know, ninety percent of the the money off art. Yeah. And then the rest of us are left to scrounge. And for they're like exposure. Eighty dollars. Yeah. Have you seen that whatever, meme? That's yeah. like I just like was just obsessed with it. It's like there's two guns, and someone's like, "What's your rate?" And they're like, "What's your budget?" <laughs> and that's like, like holding guns. That at is each other. the absolute yeah. like. Mm. All the time when people are like, okay, will you play? Like, what's your rate? And I was like, no, what's your budget? Mm. Because like, and you just, it's so hard. I think having a manager is like a great thing. Well, it came out that. a few weeks ago. The state government in Australia actually made um, an announcement saying that the uh, minimum you should be paying a live act is $250. Mm. Yeah. Even yeah. if they're just doing an hour or half an hour, Which it should be $250 so many minimum. Which are not, yeah. yeah. That's it. That's ridiculous. And we've started doing like hourly rates instead of flat fees, which has mm. also dropped the amount down a bit, I think. Because mm. people see $80 an hour and they think, well, that's twice what I'm getting working my full-time job, whatever. 
Yeah. But these artists are spending four or five times the amount of time setting up the set. Doing the set. That's it. And then they've got to do their own marketing. And yep. Yeah. You know, there's all this behind the scenes stuff that happens that they're not getting paid for. So, of course, they deserve this money. But that's what we were saying mm. yesterday, where it's like, if you're going to get into this industry and it's like a sing- uh, solo single DJ or like entertainer or this or that, you got to be a graphic designer. you got to be an online advertiser, marketer. You just have to be so a true. business guru, basically. But like, look at Project Bex, you're doing all that, right? You've basically ticked all oh, those you made boxes. Me feel so good. <laughs> I, I have seen you pretty much everywhere. I don't know if that's just because like I follow all your pages. Well, yeah, it seems like, like you're I'm popping off. <laughs> yeah. I hope so. I mean, again, I'm just like, I think accepting the ebbs and flows. Like last year, it was so crazy. Mm. Like I said, we'd been around for like six months and like won a Wham Award, was supporting like the Pond, Tame Empire, like insane shit. And then the last six months has just felt like nothing. Mm. But it's just like ebbs and flows. A lot of it is COVID. I honestly think it's because you've elevated it. Because a lot of acts nowadays, they were very one dimensional. Yeah. Bring the same thing. That's mm. it. But you've same gone and included time. all these different elements the light show, the dancing, the singing, the DJ decks, the ba- the band. It's all incorporated into one and you've elevated the set. Do you also mm. ever get like the audience singing the tracks back at you as well yeah, or anything? It's so yeah. cute. It'd be That's so like, heartwarming, right? That like, yeah, it kills me. Mm. When people know my songs. I'm like, but also, I mean, that, again, there's the main thing of, like, people being like, that song really meant something to me and really, like, got me. Th- I was like, what? The song that I wrote? <laughs> yeah. me? What the fuck? Like, <laughs> that's, yeah. yeah, so dope. Yeah. So that's why I think I'm just, like, back on being like, yeah, I'm back, baby, and, like, want to just keep releasing stuff for people mm. to enjoy, even if I don't get to play as many live shows. How many live shows would you say you've done in total? Or, like, roundabout? <laughs> 40, 50, 60? <laughs> Too many to count probably at this stage. I reckon one every like second weekend last year. Nice. So that's, that's 20. Yeah. That's not bad. Maybe, maybe like 30. Project Vex stuff or are you doing equal parts DJing and... Well, yeah, is that just Project Vex or is yeah, that... Yeah, just Project Vex. I'm doing I'm probably way more DJing just like here and there stuff. Because mm. um, I know you, you've DJed for us quite a few times at soon. I love it so much. Thank you for that. Soon. <laughs> now we'll get you back for wavelength too. Yeah, you guys get you let me. We'll, we'll hire the whole be band myself, out. and I love it. Oh my god, that would be so fun. Yeah. Well, we've got that's the... why. That's what I love as well. Is like, and I'm really proud of the fact that Project Bex we've played like nightclubs and the only live act. Mm. Like we played this like Burning Swan, Blazing Swan. Blazing Swan. Yeah, Blazing Swan. Um, yeah night which was insane it was like mad had a themed of mm-hmm. Rio social and was like Ugh. mushroom like big yeah it was just so crazy and everyone dressed up and went insane is that it like was... at a warehouse sort of location like a rave no free social, social? Oh, social. Yeah. which is it's a big warehouse the mad had us put something on there yeah ages ago mm. No, yeah. it was, I didn't know that. It, yeah, I'd be probably like a couple months. Mm. But also, shout out to Tony ABC. Thank you for joining in. We 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 have noticed your comment. Tony oh. it says hello Perth. <laughs> yeah. He's not from Perth. <laughs> yeah. Hello to Perth. Um, and it was just DJs all night, and then it was us, and that's like so cool to me that we can fit into like the DJ club scene and like effortlessly, but then also mm. be on like a full band lineup. Yeah. Um. Because that was kind of always my goal was to try and like merge electronic music into live so people can enjoy electronic music and not just have to be like your project Vex act you still have the decks out there no not at all no but it's so it's full it's, live band. it's just that like kind yeah. of dancey it takes a lot of influence from the dance scene yeah especially because yeah. a lot of your songs are very like they've got the four by four beat yeah mm-hmm. yeah very yeah, easy to dance yeah to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's just so good we'll see how it goes Next minute, next time I'm on, I'll be like homeless and like <laughs> <laughs> on the brink of well, death. Well, I hope like, not. Guys, man. it didn't work. <laughs> I'm tired. Take it back. But yeah, we. I'd like to get you out soon at wavelength to for the band at a rave. So yes, a rave. we love a rave. Yep. That'd, That'd be, be good. I think one hell of a party. <laughs> yeah. Just got to find a venue now. Yeah. It's so hard to find warehouse venues that'll take you know 500 people. <laughs> I'll have a look for you as well. Yeah. I think mm. we're actually thinking about hiring our own space. Yeah. Just hiring a warehouse and doing it like that. Yeah, I That's reckon. Probably the best bet, though. I mean, it's like $20,000 a year to hire a warehouse somewhere. Yeah. And you could, you would have so many, like, 
share. Like I'd buy into that. Well, yeah, mm. that's we can hire it out to other people who want to. That's it. Yeah. Throw them in said too. So. Yeah. Be like ten thousand dollars. We just gotta get. The <laughs> that's first, it. Yeah. <laughs> I'll run a cover business. Our costs. I'll do the business. Yes, <laughs> yeah. good. Oh well, I'll hit you up then. Yeah. Mm. So with the production oh, wow. and everything like that, so where are you going from now? Like, what's what's in the works for like if you're back, kind of thing? <laughs> what have you got? I regret saying that. Cause <laughs> yeah. we're like, where's your shit? Yeah. When you're really <laughs> well, you did bring us some treats today to listen to. Yeah. Yeah. Well. So <laughs> I guess again, this is uh, the epitome of that thing I was talking about of like kind of the hip hop MC like boss bitch vibe versus the like spooky ethereal harmony choir Beck, <laughs> like Project Bex is two very different sounds. But I hope that they all still like sound like Should like trademark that genre. Yeah. <laughs> like ethereal Spooky, ethereal hip hop. Have you got a title yeah. for this track yet? <laughs> so if so you guys scroll down. Um and this is what which what do we want? So do you want should we do the hip hop one first? Yep. Which one's that? It's called Don't Touch Me. This is about I was really angry with the world when I wrote this. Nice. Um so it's very political. <laughs> yep. And uh good I think. I don't know. Siri features in it. We love Siri. I'm angry all the time. Where did you get the, um, the, what do you call it? Like the text to speech bot? Yeah, I just online, Siri. just oh, an okay. AI generator. Nice. I had to like type it in and then like. Because I've been trying to do something similar with this with Soonbot. Yeah. Because Soonbot's supposed to be some crazy AI thing. Yeah. But, uh. I just, you just have to do I did it like word by word and then like pitch the words to how I like. It was like, took ages, but I'm sure there's a better way than that. <laughs> you just ask Siri. <laughs> Yeah, we got that Lily Allen vibe, mm. maybe. It does. It's like very. Turn British. up a little bit. <laughs> Definitely Lily Allen vibe. Hundred percent Lily Allen vibe. You can go to the chorus and then we can stop. Yeah. <laughs> Here comes the drop. Here we go. <laughs> Got the choir going in the background. Yeah. The production quality is so good. <laughs> My yeah. head's really good. <laughs> and like, so how long did this take to make? This was like one night. One night. Because I was so angry. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, had like ten Red Bulls and was like, <laughs> <laughs> on the brink of a heart attack. I'm like, gotta get this yeah, out. Yeah, I gotta got finish it tonight. <laughs> But yeah, so that's kind of, uh, I think, the next one we're going to release. And then, I don't know if you're going to this. <laughs> Why, are you bored of it already? Are you hearing your own voice? I listen to it all the time. You can talk yeah. over it because people, I've only got it low on the stream, so. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's hard to talk about yourself, isn't it? I guess it's just, yeah, like, me being like, it's so... Uh, that's probably what I'm struggling with the most is like just choosing like when I sit down to make a song I'm like hip hop or like spooky because mm. that's they're very the two like what about hip hop and spooky yeah <laughs> can it yeah. be done and why, why don't we throw a choir in there too <laughs> that's it yeah that's be- that's Project X <laughs> yeah. hip hop spooky choir mm. that's all you need that's what I was saying before trademark it it's your own specific genre invent something new yeah be like on the forefront of this new what yeah. can call it? Just exactly that. <laughs> Spooky hip hop choir. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds like an EDM song name. You know? yeah. That's it, yeah. I was like talking to a mayor, my synth player, about because she makes kind of like hyper pop stuff. Mm. But she like is so good at just like making up just genres. She was like digital cream. <laughs> She's like razor, bo- razor bouquet, and just like all this, like just putting two words together. I was like, I know what you mean, though. Like, yeah, yeah razor bouquet. Did you know it was like Digi Scream and like Turbo Fairy or something? I was like, I know exactly what like, you know what genre that is. Yeah, it sounds like coming up with a name for a band or something. Yeah, mm. so. it's pretty cool though. Yeah. And so you've only got these four or five tracks 
ready to go at the moment? Is, is it going to be released as another EP or? Nah, I think I'm going to do singles. I've got so many tracks. Like these ones are not really even in the set at the moment. And the set is made up of like 10 songs. Yeah. Four of which are from the EP. So there's like six songs just sitting there that haven't been released. Plus these four. Like there's a lot, but I think, like I said, I still just want to go back and like perfect the other ones. These ones mm. are basically like done and ready i think it's a nice little way to end it as well it's like, yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah very yeah. nice <laughs> and then the other one which is i'm like most excited about i reckon oh no it's private you, how does it what yeah um <laughs> this one's like hell weird there as we well go. which my dad likes it but it's like drum and bass kind of so I was surprised. That Sounds sick. On your own, yeah. It's about. Um, I wrote it from the perspective of a serial killer. Which serial killer nah, specifically? Just like if just... I killed someone. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Do you guys have dreams about that kind of stuff? Huh? You guys don't. <laughs> <laughs> but then yeah, my dad's like, maybe just don't say that <laughs> to the audience. I was yeah. like, no. Nah, it was just like I watched like true crime, and I was like, mm. imagine if someone wrote a song for like. A killer, like you've just murdered someone, and then, but it's also about other things. <laughs> <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> we're starting to figure no, out I the swear. real bags. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> now we're just on that theatrical vibe again, mm. I guess. But this one I think would be good. <laughs> Are these four tracks similar in that you've done a lot with the like audio, um, with the vocals? Yeah, I think they have that because I've just kind of that's where I'm at at the moment. I love that, like, I guess slightly more robotic, mm. like, texture at the moment. So be, I guess they're like similar. It'd be so funny though. It's like five years down the track and it's like on Spotify and it's like the lyrics and it's like behind the track. <laughs> yeah. It's like people just reading, it's like, damn, like, yeah. I, I never crazy. would have guessed. Like,. <laughs> So it's just like really beautiful, like you're on your own. But this like fat drop. Mm. Goes off live, so that's all I know that means it's a good song. But I'll play it live. So this one you played live before? Yeah, once. Once. Um, and it went off. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think. Nice. Does, I don't know. <laughs> to me, I'm like you. Were people are jumping? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you ever do anything like that emceeing in between or anything like that? It's like, come on, everyone, get up or like... Kind of, Bex, when she... What am I, she? When she's in <laughs> You're the... You're talking in third person. The here. Project Bex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like different to me, Beck. Um, So I kind of just like go into this like little zone. Yeah. And I'll... And like people persona. have said it, which is kind of cool. Yeah. So I like, talk diff a bit differently on stage we'll talk a bit less and won't be like yeah it's just like a little bit different so I, I again how I was saying like most of the whole set is like scored mm. so I don't really talk that much because I just want the performance to like speak, speak for itself yeah. yeah but I used to all the time be like where'd you guys have dinner <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> that'd be just, so awesome <laughs> yeah I know and then I was like I'm just trying to figure out again like what the right thing or Bex and Project Bex is. Yeah. But I just do like what I feel like. If one day I feel like hell talking, I'll like literally like stop everything and be like, you, <laughs> how are you? <laughs> so there's room for it. Mm. But well, it's showmanship as well. Yeah. It's just being able to go like, you, <laughs> how's your day been? <laughs> <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> yeah, that's it. Me? Oh my God, like, good. put the light on the spotlight. So like, like, who? Yeah. Me? Yeah. Yeah, mm. no. But well, hopefully these will be out soon in the world. Yeah. Get my shit together. <laughs> yeah. I think it's just daunting when you think about releasing, like what you were literally saying before, like I have to do all the marketing. I got to plan the launch event. I got to like hit up radios, hit up like press. Like if you want to release something right, mm. or I could just like literally put on Spotify tomorrow. And be like, it's out. Yeah. But I prefer to do. It's better it's doing that. Shot to like it is as many years as possible that's exactly it's it it's just a, I don't I, yeah if you don't make music you probably don't realise how it's like exhausting to release a track yeah if you, especially if you're on your own like I'm 
about the song. <laughs> I'm like completely solo. Like I do everything. So I just got to have the energy. Mm. So when you also go to make these tracks and stuff, so your synth player will actually play this backing track, right? So I write different synth parts for her. Yep. Okay. So a lot of the time, which again, I think is cool. Like stuff that she plays live is not in the actual track. Like if you listen to it on Spotify, she's not in it. Yeah. But then I'll write her pieces for her to do live. So it just sounds like interesting and different. That's pretty cool though. Cause yeah. then it's like, it actually it's different from a live performance to the actual yeah. record. Yeah. And like, for example, there's live drums obviously in the live thing, but all my drums are like, mm. soft, what is the word? Software. software yeah. 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 So it's just like, and I don't, and all, all the backing vocals on my tracks are me like in layers, but then live mm. it's like these two other voices. So that's why I just think of like, I think it's, I think it's important. Like Project Bex as a live band is very different to the Spotify thing. And the songs, like even some of the structures are different. They sound different. Um, Mm. Well, even like there's a lot of artists out there and DJs and stuff that will hold tracks, hold onto tracks for years without releasing them and only use them for their live sets. Mm. Is this like something special that you can only see? If yeah, you go it's to like the a live little set? secret, and it's another like it's drive to pull come. people to the set. Like you can only hear this song if you come. You know? That's exactly yeah. it. Yeah. And so yeah, I know. I love and hate that about like local artists at the moment do that with merch. Mm. Like they only sell their merch at their shows. So mm. if you want some merch, you have to go. Which I love and hate because I was like, oh, I just, can I just have some merch? <laughs> yeah, that's it. I just want to buy it online, mm. but get sent also, to my front door. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's like I don't have to like try it on in the club. Mm. But all these tactics, <laughs> mm. the merch will be coming soon. Will it? I don't know. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> so if you could have it your way with merch, what would you want to sell other than shirts, the key oh rings, and stress balls? <laughs> Like pants, the balaclavas. Underwear, underwear. balaclavas. That's it. <laughs> underwear, that's an expression. Well, that's it. You can have yeah. like badass Boxes. bitch on the back yeah. or something. <laughs> yeah, and like the diamantes. Yeah. <laughs> um, those like little air freshers that hang from your car. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be I have cool. like I, this little list of like her weird, yeah, like weird um, merch. So I was like contact lenses that say like, I swear to God, people should just sell us, like, everyday items, like toilet paper, like brand yeah. new toilet paper, because everyone needs toilet paper. All the Wipe time. your ass with my face. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But you never know, like, doing, like, a niche thing like that, it, it becomes a meme. Well, that's why, like, yeah. the stressful butt thing was so good. People took so many photos and, like, mm. love it. And it's, like, not a shirt that you might, like, forget about. People just, like, have it that's it, on yeah. their desk. Mm. It's so funny. Mm. <laughs> we got yeah. five minutes left, Alex. Oh, we do? We do. Oh, shit. <gasps> that, that's gone quick. quickly. Time flies well, when we, you're having fun. Well, we can go a little bit longer. You, it's up to you, Alex. Oh, always. yeah, we'll, we'll keep going then. I feel like yeah. I'm just giving you the warning. You don't have yeah. to argue with me. All right. <laughs> this entire time, I've just been doing this. You have, and it's been perfect. It's ADD, sorry. It's creating more movement on the screen, so keep, keep, keep swimming around. <laughs> They're like, are you frozen? I'm like, no. <laughs> yeah, if That's you the camera's stop moving, frozen, we're yeah. frozen. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Greg O'Burns here. Oh, Greggy! In the element there, Bex sh- should be a comedian. No. No? Never no. thought about it? No. Yeah, no, nah, I've, I've thought about it. <laughs> Stand up, I would die. You reckon? You have to just have no ego. I did it for uni. Like, I, we did like a course of stand up. Really? Comedy. Yeah. Really? Um, what, what so you did go to uni then? Yeah. Mm. So not for music though. I did went to Wapa for theatre. Oh, okay. Yep, yep. Um, and one of the it was all these different units. Like clowning was one of them, and like puppetry, and then like c- comedy was like one of them. Miming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How do you go in the comedy then? I won. Really? I won the round. Yeah. yeah. Out of everyone in my class, so that was fun. So maybe you should be a comedian. I'd fame. Yeah, but it was like that's the only material I had. It was like telling <laughs> stories about my childhood. Right. Mm. I think that would just be my set. Self, self-deprecation <laughs> is the name of the game. Yeah, it was like, it's really gross. It was just like a lot about poo. <laughs> <laughs> but like I made it because I just like pooed a lot as a kid. And like in weird places and like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I, I just like I can told see. all these stories. And, like, Fair enough. Yeah, people would find that funny, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. With, uh, <laughs> yeah. And like my mum put me on a leash and like not my sister. You know, like when you went to a royal show. Right. Like kids on leash. But the one for some, I think it was like a dog leash. Are you younger or older? 
I'm 14 months younger than my younger. sister. Yeah. So not like very close. Mm. But the leash that she had me on was like a retractable one as well. So I'd be like, <laughs> woo, and like run, and then I'd like, like yeah. think I'm free, but I'm not. <laughs> yeah. I was like, why don't you just get me on like a normal one? Mm. But yeah, Emma didn't have to be on a leash. <sighs> no. Nope. So, so a little bit jealous? A little yeah. bit of jealousy yeah. there? <laughs> no, nah, it just means I was so like crazy. Unhi- yeah, like yeah. good unhinged. You know? mm. Woo. Yeah, just having too much fun with life. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Reckless. <laughs> yeah. And you can see that energy live if you see Bro- Project Bex live. Yeah, mm-hmm. no leashes. I'm unleashed. <laughs> yeah. In the show. When is the next Project Bex yeah. booked for? We had some amazing shows. Um, let me check. Like, shout out to Ice Cream Factory because they mm. booked us for the Veronica's and Vera Blue. Did that would have been awesome. Back, or did you play that? No, Ice Cream Factory is shut now. Shut. Yeah. Yeah. They might push it back maybe like to december right. mm. but those were our next ones and we like did a whole new show new set for it it was gonna be sick but otherwise our next show is literally next saturday very nice first show first like proper show back after like we performed at Freo art center like during the day on a sunday which was cute but again you know, i was like it's not like a bet project yeah. didn't show. Feel like, right. we need the like lights and shit Mm. So this is the first one back, and it's for raising money for Support Act, which is again what we were talking about before of how like a lot of the, these this level of musicians aren't getting paid anything every time we lose a gig. Support Act do pay like they're giving out grants to musicians. If you like prove that you lost money and lost gigs, they give you like two thousand dollar grants. They're like saving the industry right now. Nice, Amazing. this is an interesting topic to. Um, yeah. to uh, pull up on the... Yeah, try to pull up on yeah. the website and stuff. What was the company called again? Support Act. Are they based in Perth? No, I think they're on the East Coast. I think I actually applied for this during the first lockdown period. Yeah. Potentially. And I actually, I did get money. It worked yeah. out quite well for they me. They were like... Yeah, no, this website. Yeah, I did. Only, this works. The only people helping us, really. <laughs> yeah. Um. So we're raising money for them, which is awesome. And it's at Rosemount on Saturday the 19th. The Rosemount. Be there. <laughs> Is it ticketed as well? Like, how, how much do you charge normally for a show? Well, that's... We, like, rarely put on our own... Sh- like, I'll only ever put on my own show if it's, like, my single launch or whatever. All the yep. other shows are, like, people. other people ask us. So the Rosemount is putting it on. I don't know how much tickets are, but okay. it might even be like donate, like pay as you feel, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm sure it would be, be ticketed like donation events. So. Yeah, mm. but it's another thing of like really wanting to make your um gigs like accessible to anyone. Like if any, I'm like really passionate about that. If any like socioeconomic status or whatever, you can come see live music. But then also like you, a musician has to make money, so it's always That's hard it, to yeah. like, know. The donate as you like the donate as you want kind of thing. That's a good thing. Yeah. At the same time, yeah. Even that, my f- dad is always like, "Can you put me on the door?" I was like, <laughs> Your I'm dad retired. is. <laughs> yeah. Can you? And I was like, you know, if you pay for it, it goes like to me, and it helps fund like. Yeah. He's like, just put me on the door. I was like, what the heck? <laughs> he just and wants then, to be VIP. Come, so you don't get the argument late. from your parents. So I brought you up for eighteen years and paid for your schooling and all your food and clothes. So you, nah. you can put nah. me on the door list. Because I'm like, look at me now, I'm poor. I'm sorry. I, just, I, I think I just gave your father an excuse, uh, like a nah. a rebuttal to your. <laughs> but he hasn't even said that. He just goes. Oh, I just don't want to have to like line up and like. Yeah. <laughs> That's it, yeah. VIP trip, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's funny. Oh, but yeah, wow. hopefully, gigs will be coming and going. Mm. But just they're all on the on the Facebook page. Yeah. If you're listening now, it's very important to support your <laughs> artists now at this point. So pay now pay more for than tickets. ever. Yeah. Yeah. And t- t- ticket sales aren't usually that much. Perfect. Yeah. Paying like 20, 25 bucks. Yeah. That's it. It's not like four coffees, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Probably not yeah, even that's that. That's a good nowadays, way to put so. it. Yeah. Coffee's ridico. It no, is, no, yeah. No. Yep. Can I buy one every day? <laughs> Inflation, hey? No, not every day, but. Mm. You haven't like uh, gotten into making your own coffee yet? Nah, everyone's. <laughs> Project Bex signature ever. coffee. Oh, like coffee beans? <laughs> yeah, signature blend. Oh, yeah. Like. <laughs> I would. <laughs> that's like my thing, though. If I, if, any, if they're listening, yeah. I want to get sponsored by Nudie Orange Juice. That would be so good. Added ass. 
Yeah. Please. Nudie Orange Juice would be one hell of a sponsor. I want to get like a sponsor. Sponsor. <laughs> And also maybe like Chicken Salt. Chicken Salt? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which like brand this. though? The one with the chicken. Yeah, what? Chippy Chicken Salt Chippy, or whatever it is. Yeah. Chippy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Why like, that? Because I love it. And I just yeah. like... And put it on everything. But. I reckon I spend... I'm like the number one customer. <laughs> yeah. The nudie orange pulp. Mm, oh, so good. So good. So I tasty. Like the nothing but apples one. Can we actually pull their website up? <laughs> Can you send them a request as well? <laughs> That's it. Let's send them an email. I tag them all the time on Instagram. I'm like, nudie, what are you doing? <laughs> no, really? Scene. <laughs> Just yeah. like they don't get back to you. That's, that's I'm pretty sure so they're true. local as well. They're WA, I'm pretty sure. Aren't, aren't they? Um, it's, but there's probably like some. Mark, like some marking person is just replying. Yeah, that's it. I need it. to go to like the sponsorship. That's office. it. Or just rock up to their front door. <laughs> you just send them an email. Like it's orange. <laughs> Bex is orange. There's so many reasons why. <laughs> oh, I can't believe. Look how good it looks. On the podcast. <laughs> um, Look how cute he is as well. That's it. Their little uh, mascot. <laughs> I could be. That could be my fan. I just want free. OJ forever. Yeah. yeah. That's it. Who wouldn't? I'll tell them, I'll shout them out in every... I'll be like, Harvey Fresh is shit. <laughs> Have some nudie. Well, I'm pretty sure Harvey Fresh got sold to the Chinese, actually. <gasps> yeah. They're based in Sydney. They're based in Sydney. Nudie. Okay. And there you go. Yeah. Got to move to Sydney. <laughs> That's it. Go to their front door and be like, with a portfolio, this is what I do. Give me a sponsorship. You look at me. <laughs> now you know. That's it. What do you want to get sponsored by? What do you use all the time? Us. Yeah. Clothing. It'd be cool to get, like, sponsored by, like, I don't know, Cosmic or DJ City or... Yeah, Nah, not that. cool, though. Just, like, what do you want? Like, what do you... <laughs> oh, I haven't even thought about it. Hey. That's what I'm thinking about it right now. You've got five seconds. For me? Free clothes. Just... So, what brand? Brands? Uh... Or you want to get... Armani? <laughs> <K-Mart. laughs> oh, yeah, true. Yeah. Nah, um... You need to, like... Oh, cool <laughs> shirts would be would be cool to sponsor us. They're based in Melbourne, though. Yeah. Mm. yeah. What about Coles? Coles? You get free food forever. You good? Just think about it. I guess so, yeah. <laughs> Tell us in the chat if you would buy uh, Apple. Coles products. Nah, fuck Apple. If we could give you a percentage fix of my Mac, please. <laughs> and um, we'll we'll um, give uh, Bex a little cutback every time we sell an orange or whatever. <laughs> Just oranges, though. Every time you buy a nudie juice, mm. take a photo of it on Instagram and tag me. Yep. And tag nudie. Let's get it going. <laughs> <laughs> we have, yeah, we have to get Just, them on board. Let's, let's like start the snowball. Message them to be like, oh, Be- Project Bex and nudie is always together. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Maybe we should pay this girl, mm. or maybe they'll just think, ha, huh, we fooled this girl into giving us free pomo. I'm fine with it. <laughs> You're fine. No, with it. I want the juice. Because <laughs> eventually, like, if you get enough promo, eventually people are going to be like, well, why haven't they sponsored you yet? And they're going to get angry and. Mm. God, I'm playing hard to get. <laughs> <laughs> they just have not replied. <laughs> Speaking of social media and stuff like that, so with your Instagram account for like, do you have a Project Bex, Project Bex Instagram account? And yeah. Like, and so like, how do you find like just trying to keep that updated and do the marketing and the whole lot? Because it's, it's it's like a full time job, isn't it? Yeah. It's also hard because I don't have a um, like I don't have a personal account. Yeah. So a lot of the time, like some people will be like, "Oh, why don't you post?" Like, if, I don't know, people I've dated have been like, why don't you post me on your story more? Or, like, mm. I don't know, just, like, weird, like, personal stuff. And I'm like, oh, no, it's because it's, like... It's that, yeah. A bit more business, which kind of sucks. Like, maybe I should get a private one and just post, like, memes and, like... But I like that it's my business page, but it's me and I share all my... Yeah, what you're doing. Well, if you got a personal one, it's just extra work almost. Yeah, for sure. Like, this is, you know, at the end of the day, Instagram, it just has to look pretty. And, you know, all the photos and everything, it looks nice. Yeah, I've like, got, a, got an aesthetic. Yeah. And so, what's in the uh, link tree as well? So, is that like, have you got, you don't have a website or anything like that? Or yeah, I do. You have a website as well. I've got a video. Oh, there's a Spotify, lot there. You got unearthed, like. I got it all. I got it. And so. How often do you maintain and like go through all of this and keep I've it up been to date? Slack, but I mean, well, that's fair. There's so yeah. many of these. <laughs> yeah, like monthly, probably just check in on everything, make sure it's all like up to date. Every time I do a gig, I have to like update my bio and like that kind of stuff. But mm. yeah, 
so what what do you actually have on your youtube channel as well what well, we were looking for so what else you got so facebook website bandcamp unearth how do you find bandcamp and unearth does that work well or? unearth is good i rarely use bandcamp it's just like where people can directly buy your songs as yeah yeah to like buying them off apple music i guess yeah um, so you are listed on apple music as well yeah yep but the unearthed is mainly just so you can get triple j play like they'll watch you from um sorry watch you from unearthed and then okay. that's then they like see that song and then they'll take it on you have to upload it to unearthed if you want to get played oh no way okay yeah. I always thought it was just like, you know, you just go and do RTR a couple of times and be on the radio and this and that. And then eventually, like, nah. if you're popular, they'll and pick you up. And then there's, like, APRA, AMCOS, and, like, the other one that's for radio. And that's what I mean when releasing a song is just so much work. You have to put it on so many platforms so, like, people can play it and you can get money for it. Like, yeah, because everybody's on – everybody – like has their own preference to what platform they go to and because it's so spread out nowadays yeah through spotify soundcloud title Bandcamp, yeah. title fucking apple music like all that it's just you have to put it everywhere mm. for it to get any sort of number of plays i guess yeah when i changed because i was originally bex mm. and then changed it to project bex that was the worst time of my life like me hacking into the mainframe to try and like and then it like changed on Apple Music, didn't change on Spotify, and then there was like four different versions of Mex and pro and like never ever change your artist name if you can avoid it. It was <laughs> ridiculous, but I think we're good now. Did you have to do all that through your distribution company or because you yeah. can't upload to Spotify by yourself? No, nah, it's got to be through a distro label. But yep. then my distro, it was just like issues with Spotify. Like I had. It was through the distro thing, but then I had to like email Spotify and Apple help. And I was like, you need to merge these two accounts. Mm. And then it's just so like, much yeah, work. I'll do it. And it took like eight days. If they made it easy, everyone would do it. That's the problem. Yeah. Mm. So, got to make it difficult. Sure. Otherwise, yeah. everybody will change the name all the time and then we'd have complete anarchy. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> That's so true. <laughs> I'm going to change it to this time. <laughs> Even, like, if you want to change your like Instagram name, you can only change it like twice in... 14 days they're yeah. like stop doing it <laughs> i think like, youtube's no. like you have to wait 30 days if we can change yeah. it again so. and you're like what i just like felt sporadic or you like put a typo in you're like fuck yeah and then you're like 30 days yeah. breaks for like two yeah. weeks mm. but damn it yeah. yeah i'm bex with a c in it Ew. <laughs> no that can be cool actually b c x well that's what you could do with like all your different personas just have different bex spelt differently yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you know the origin can, story you... that I was originally called Bex Amphetamine? Bex Amphetamine. Really? Which I thought it was real funny. It's like, nice. Have ADD and take Dexies. Mm. Not meth. Yeah. But it does promote. No, it's Dexies. I know. Specific image. So I yeah. think I did one gig with that, and then I got asked to play an underage thing festival, and they're like, you, you can't change. <laughs> you can't. That no. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, okay, just do Bex. And then it stuck. <laughs> nice. <laughs> that's the origin, that's the origin story, story. <laughs> and, uh, and i was like maybe i'll do ecstasy i was like same shit yeah that's yeah. it underage I'm nope ecstasy like, is an emotion <laughs> no, it's not a bloody yeah. lifestyle <laughs> yeah used to it mm. a hard name so what's the funnest gig that you've done as project vex tell us a story yeah tell us a story <laughs> probably that that like mad hatter one was super fun mm. um because it was completely sold out so like yeah, just shoulder to shoulder in there. Free socially is like, it's a thousand people. They put a lot of effort yeah, into like, like set dressing and stuff. Yeah, so 800 people. There was no other bands before us and we just got on. My, because a lot of, I do like a lot of stuff through Ableton on my laptop, like tracks. Mm. Stuffed up three times, so it went completely dead. Like so much tech shit. Really? But it was still so fun. <laughs> <laughs> like we just pushed through. <laughs> but I think that, yeah, it doesn't really matter where we play as long as the crowd is good like we really vibe off that and also like the thick lawn anytime it's like our own show and i get to like curate the room exactly how i want it and stuff those are always really fun mm. i often tell people that a party is all about the vibe anyway that's it mm. and um that's why we at soon have a, a designated type title of vibe checker yeah we have a vibe checker 
Hells yeah! Which, which doubles as security guard, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, you don't match the vibe you're out. It's so that's so true. Yeah. yeah. But I think like that's the biggest thing for me and for like, the band. I'm sure agree is is like obviously bigger is fun, but not when the if the crowd was shit. But it was like ten thousand people, you'd be like lame. Yeah. Like we just love when they're really into it. Mm. If it's like five people or like five hundred people. Yeah, I often find it's the space as well. If you've got a small space and a small crowd, but it's full, you're still going to have a yeah. good time. That's yeah. it, yeah. But if you go to a big space and it's not full, then you're going to... like, hello, hello. Yeah. <laughs> Is this party shit? <laughs> yeah. Also for us as well, because it's so dancing and electronic, the space really is affected with like acoustics and stuff. So like, yeah, some fallback and subs are just like, we just like need, need some fat subs. It's <laughs> good. Do you ever have to put requests in or anything like that for the audio equipment and be yeah. like, yeah, um, and just see like what there is. Cause it, like, it would be quite a production, right? You'd have lots of moving parts in the behind the scenes and kind of stuff like that. So how do you yeah. manage all of that? Must be a nightmare to set know. up. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty simple. The main thing is just sound checks because there's three singers. Mm. So, mm. and we all like, don't, we don't use in-ears, which are like, where you can hear your fallback in there. You don't monitor the music. Yeah, so, like, we just really always need sound checks and it's so hard because we are so, like, we have three-part harmonies and you really have to be able to hear the other singers. Mm, yeah. So if we don't get a sound check, it's, like, pretty rough the first couple of songs. We're just, like, constantly, like, looking at the sound guy being, like, me up, like, less of her. <laughs> and it looks like full sign language. <laughs> if you're ever, like, what are they doing? It's, like, trying to communicate to the guy or girl. But, um... Now the setup is pretty chill. I want to just keep developing it so it gets better and stuff. But yeah, easy at the moment. It's my, if my laptop dies, I'm dead. <laughs> yeah, no, I think Project Vex is very refreshing for the Perth scene. Yeah, yeah. I'm like I said, I, I, I always enjoy when people elevate and bring something new to the table. Mm. And uh, so that's why I was very excited when I first learned about Project Vex. Because I've I've always like I, I DJ obviously, but I, I've never been charismatic enough to be like the DJ behind the decks to like you know because you've also got to be a bit of a character is, yourself. Is performing, yeah. Yeah, it's a performance thing. Um, but I do like DJing, so I've mm. always wanted to like collaborate with somebody who could be that charismatic person, and then I would just be like doing all the behind the scenes kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, and I really got this idea. And we were saying like people's music we used to go back to and listen to all their old stuff. The one for me is Porter Robinson, mm. his world, world's album. And when he did his, he, he went around the world for like three years on that one live show <laughs> because it was just wild. so good. If it works. Yeah. And he hired a bunch of artists to like make all these visuals and stuff. And yeah. then he's just got a guy VJing all these visual vi uh, visuals behind the decks yeah. while he's up there. I don't. I don't really know how you would sync it all up because he's he's. You've got to like match the. It'd be a lot like of pre-planning. I've got. Yeah. So I had a three D projection artist for one of my shows. Mm. His name. He's like a he'll, one of my best friends, but his name is like Elusive Reality mm. on Instagram. But he's. It's just the program, like the three D projection, and then he. All of my audio, like goes into the speakers, but I also gave him like an output. Yep. So then the program picks up like the BPMs of everything. Um, that's that's and then he um, matches. Or he you can like tap tempo. But it's literally just like if if someone's using a live VJ, most of the time the set is they've run the set thirty times in a room before, and yep. the like. And that's I guess would be my next goal is to have like yeah a lighting or visual design person and a sound person that just like travels with Beck, so mm. they know exactly like what I want for the shows and like. There's just like a really high level of quality for all the shows and not just like, because even some sound, you just get different soundies on every show and that sometimes they'll give me like heaps of reverb when I'm mm. rapping though. And I'm like, it's, yeah, it's not, not but it's like, yeah, you can have somebody who knows the style and what you want. Yeah, set knows up like what stuff. I like. Yeah. Well, hit I me up know. if you want some <laughs> custom made visuals. Oh my God, I would love that. I'd like to get back into it again. Now yeah. that I'm, I'm unemployed again, I... I've got plenty of time and so all the time in the world. All the time to set yeah. this shit up. So yeah, yeah let's make some and... weird shit. Exactly. <laughs> That's what I want. That's what I really want. Yeah. 
All right, Alex, do you yep. want to sign us off now? All right. We've ne- we've pretty much hit n- 90 minutes. That's it. Yep. Yep. 90 minutes of fun and friendship mm. and love. And candy and <laughs> rainbows and unicorns. Yeah. Yep. Well, cheers so much for coming back on. Thanks for having it's me. It's been good. And it's yeah. good to see, like, you know, like how far you've traveled and what you've done. And Look at me now. And that's it. And now I'm the same. <laughs> La- Lana Del Rey to Lily Allen. Right. <laughs> I'm just more tired. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, thanks for having me. Who Keep thought on. that a podcast would take it out of you? Mm. Mm. No, I mean, I mean in life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, nothing bad <laughs> meant by that at all. I thought you were like, no, I meant like I've come back a year later and you're like, you've aged. <laughs> Yeah, I think you, that, you look. Today. Well, that's a wonderful thing to say to the guest. <laughs> Disheveled. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I know. I know. <laughs> yep. It's the world that we live in. So, where can people find you in. next, Bex? So, Saturday night, Saturday 19th at Rosemount. Really important cause. Raising money for COVID ruining everything. Um, I'm DJing around a lot, but the the band stuff is like... We love it the most. After that is a big one at Frio Social um, later in the month. But just follow the Tings, Project Bex, and, like, stay up to date. And I'm releasing some music. And also just trying to share the love. I post lots of memes and they're funny. So <laughs> that's, that's, that's my, new, memes, that's my like, career fallback. Where do I find these memes? <laughs> they'll, 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 they'll find come, you. They'll find <laughs> <me>. <laughs> no, occasionally they'll come up. But mm. stay strong out there, everyone. That's it. We'll get we'll through it. We'll get this. through it. Yep. All right. That's it. Yeah, let's finish it up. Sure. <laughs> why not? Sign us off, Alex. Giddy All right. up. We'll see you in a fortnight, I guess, with some more guests. And Yeah, we've got Johnny E coming on next yeah. week. And we've got, I've got, not next week, in a fortnight. In a fortnight, sorry. And then also we've got Soul Bliss coming on as well, who yep. is running Manifest. See? So we're going to talk about what it's going to be like to hire out a mansion and then have a festival in a mansion he's also been dropping <laughs> some like he's already released two tracks he's been year. around forever yeah like literally he's been he, oh no that's mind electric sorry yeah that's christian yeah no, but soul bliss used to run kinky malinky in bali as well what is <laughs> yeah. that it's just his little house event well not even that little it's quite big but he had it um did resi- he take that over from perth though yeah he started in perth yeah, at geisha and then he went to cocoon beach club or something in um bali had a resident there for Thank a long, long linky. time. Yeah. yeah. And then he brought it back when COVID and the whole thing came out. And then I think it's still here now. So That's sick. Yeah. That's it. That's hot. Yeah. Hot. <laughs> Very hot. All right. Thanks, Bex, for uh, coming on the podcast. Yeah. Cheers. Thanks and then me. we'll see you in another nine months Ew. or something like that. Uh, can't wait. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll see you guys in a fortnight. Bye. Catch ya. Bye.